So now that the Boston Massacre occurred, and it occurred in 1770, Britain kind of kind of lies low for a while. Uh, they don't really do a whole lot because hopefully time will go by and things will improve in their relationship with the colonists. But they are beyond furious. Like, everything they do is wrong. They can't do anything right when it comes to the colonies. So, Parliament decides that they're going to go ahead and they're going to impose another tax. And they're going to put a tax on the citizens. But the tax they do, um, in theory, isn't actually bad. They're going to lower the cost of tea. So they're going to do this Tea Act. What the Tea Act does is it reduces the cost of tea. But the problem with reducing the cost of tea is that it created a monopoly. And that mono what a monopoly means is one business, one company, owns and operates the entire thing. Um, so you own everything from the ground up. You own the fields, you own the product, you own where it's sold. Like they own everything. And there's no competition. So one tea company to rule them all. So that's what they do. And they feel like, you know, this monopoly is going to lower the cost and that maybe the colonists are going to be a-okay. You know, maybe everything's going to be right. Um... The colonists are not happy. They don't want to go to a store and only be able to buy one kind of tea or one tea because they're not stupid. That one tea is the king's tea. So every time they bought the tea, it would be giving the king money because he owns the business. He owns the tea industry. So the only tea they could purchase is his tea, which is giving him money, and they don't like him right now because of everything that's been going on. They've constantly been doing their letter writing. They're protesting. And you have, of course, like boycotts and all this stuff going on. And so why would you give this man money? That's how they look at it. So they're upset. Some of them are upset enough to take dramatic action. And so that would be our Sons of Liberty. So the Boston Tea Party occurs, 1773. So the act has happened. It's lowered the cost of tea. And the Sons of Liberty are going to use this as a way to go ahead and kind of hit England again. So we've had the Boston Massacre. We're having tax collectors being harassed and stuff like that. But now what they're going to do is they're going to go on the king's boat. It's his ships. They're going to take his tea, and they're going to throw it out there in the harbor, destroying it and destroying the product and destroying the king's money. They dress up, yes, as American Indians, and they get on the boats. They do hurt and kill soldiers trying to get on there, um, and they damage all of the king's property. But... When they're on there and they're throwing those crates out, they're not throwing, like, just the tea out. They're not just, you know, boarding the king's boat. This is very symbolic. When those crates are going out here into the water, they are really throwing the king out into the water. They're saying, you are trash. You aren't doing anything for us. You're no good. It's not about... The T, it's what the T symbolized, his power over them. The power that this man could say that you're only going to have this one product for the rest of your lives. And that that's just the way it's going to be and you have no say in it. So these Sons of Liberty have picked this very wisely. You know, like this is something that a lot of the colonists kind of feel like this is a overreach of the king's power on their life. So when they throw it into the water, uh, Parliament and the king are not stupid. They're not ignorant. They understand what this was. This was them, the colonists, throwing Parliament and the king out. You're no good. You're trash. So they have to respond. If they don't respond, they look weak. 
So they don't want to look weak because remember they've already done that declaratory act where they're trying to reassert their power over the colonies and that hasn't worked real well yet. But they have to respond. If they don't respond, they will look weak. You have citizens who are openly attacking your soldiers now who are destroying your property. So if you don't respond, you will look weak. Parliament and the king's response is the intolerable acts, or sometimes what we call the coercive acts. They're trying to force the colonists to be good citizens again. Um, it's We will force you to love us, and that's not how it's going to work, but that's what they're going to do. Parliament decides to punish the entire city of Boston for the actions of the Sons of Liberty. So they create a series of new laws to punish the colonies or the colonists in the city for what this group did. It is not everybody in the city of Boston. Not everybody in the city of Boston is okay with what the Sons of Liberty did. But this is no different than when a teacher punishes the whole class for one or two kids misbehaving. It's exactly what Parliament does. But Parliament and the King are not ignorant they look at where it's going to hurt the colonists the most in Boston. You know, what does Boston love? And that is what they take away from them. So everything that the people of Boston really love and prize, that is where they hit them. I mean, and it, it's, it's very effective. So the course of our intolerable acts, here's what it's going to do. One, it's going to close the Boston Harbor. Until you pay us back, until restitution is paid back. So all that tea that was dumped into the water, you have to pay that money back, and we're going to keep the whole harbor area closed until you do it. The problem with doing that is it does destroy, it does stop any um, money coming into the city of Boston. The people in Boston are merchants, they're traders, they their money all is tied into that harbor and the boats coming in and out of it. So when you close Boston Harbor, you close the way that they made money. So how are they going to pay you back? They can't. But this is one of those things where they believe that they want, England believes they need to hit them and hit them hard. The next thing they do is they end all colonial legislative. So all your little local government stuff, it's gone. You don't need a local government because you have us, Parliament. Like why why you need these other people when you when you got us? So they end it. And that's a good way to end like a lot of their source of complaint. Like the colonists would go to their local government and they would make their complaints and stuff. And so what the king does by ending it is he kinda ends their like complaint department. He shuts it down. He also is going to quarter or station more soldiers around the city of Boston. Now, they're not going to be in people's houses. That, no. But what he does when he's quartering the soldiers is he's allowing them to be in public areas, the streets, stores, any place that you could just go into, they're going to be there. And they're listening, and they're acting as police officers. So they are under what we know as martial law. It is military law in the city of Boston. The military is acting as the law enforcement. And any time they hear something about the Sons of Liberty, they're very much listening. They would arrest people, and they would bring them back to England for trial. So they're, they're doing a lot. They also are going to tell Catholics that you can worship freely in the city of Boston. And remember back in your American history class, a lot of people are coming over here to the New World for religious freedom for their group, their Protestant group. You know, the Puritans, the Pilgrims, all of them are kind of coming over here just for their particular group. And so now what the King and Parliament is saying is, you know what, if Catholics want to worship in your area, they can. And remember, there's always been this little conflict between the Catholics and the Protestants at this time. So they're like, you know, these people you don't like, well, they're good in your city now, and they can worship freely, and we're, we got their back. They also make any British government official, tax collectors, immune 
to criminal prosecution in um, in the area so if you are a tax collector and you know that this person owes you money you can bust up in their store without a warrant you can bring the soldiers to help you enforce the tax you can bust up their product their items looking to see if they're hiding stuff from you and this is really where like John John Hancock gets hit hard is like they really do do this a lot to him and his store so the British officers are immune you can't you can't charge them with damaging your property you can't do anything to them they have a free hand at doing whatever they want to enforce the law and pursue the law for the people of Boston and this is a lot that's going on with the with this act the series of laws and so the people feel that this is intolerable they cannot live as long as these laws are going on and everyone in the colonies all 13 of them they're like wow the king is really hitting hard I mean he is hitting these people really hard with these laws and this is pitiful like the people of Boston they don't have money they can't really operate their businesses and stuff and not everybody was responsible for the Boston Tea Party so the other colonies agree that they will meet in Philadelphia so they're going to start their little letter writing campaign and it's the committees of correspondence and each colony is going to be sending letters to other ones talking about what the British are doing in their area this is before social media before our instant communication stuff so you're living in the city of Boston you didn't know that down in Wilmington North Carolina there was a tea party there too you didn't know that what was going on down there in Wilmington as a result of that you don't know those things because you don't have all the stuff that we have today but now that they're writing letters and they're communicating they're starting to see that it's not one city that gets punished like all the colonies are having things that they don't like going on and misery unites and that is what is going on they're getting united so now that they're talking they agree to have the first continental congress so all the colonies are going to send delegates or representatives to philly so they're going to go to philadelphia and when they go there they're going to meet to discuss the intolerable acts so even though north carolina would not have these intolerable acts put on them they're sympathetic to the people of boston so they send delegates there and the delegates are going to talk they're going to discuss what's going on with the other colonies representatives and they all agree that they're going to write a letter a letter of protest to parliament so they write a letter talking about how these acts are destroying all of the city of Boston all the people there and how it is not fair and it is unjustifiable why this is going on and they tell Parliament you gotta get rid of them you gotta get rid of these laws then they tell Parliament look we are gonna give you like a year and we're gonna meet back here again and we're gonna talk about your response so they promise the delegates of all promise that they will meet one year later to discuss what is the result of their letter writing so they sent a letter to the king to parliament and they promise they will come back one year later and they do a lot's gonna happen in that that time but in 1775 they will become the second continental congress and things will have evolved in the relationship between the colonies and Britain where they won't feel that this pen is mightier than the sword anymore they're not going to feel that a letter writing campaign that words will be enough they feel that they need to start being active and pursuing a military campaign against England 